stable coins. What are these things that are so crucial to the current crypto markets, yet ideally in the future we won't need them at all? Recently, stable coins have been thrusted into the mainstream eye when the largest one of them all, Tether, had a lot of drama, FUD, and certain events surrounding it. But did you know there are dozens of other stable coins, some of them pegged to the USD in different ways, some of them pegged to gold, and other ones controlled by a central banking algorithm? So this topic is quite fascinating, and if you want to learn more about it, then all you have to do is just keep on watching. Hi everyone, my name is Kevin and I'm with Bitcoin for Beginners where we look to put out interesting and informative content during this bear market. So while you're watching this video today, if you learn anything at all, then you can support us by smashing that like button and subscribing down below if you haven't already. Okay, so let's learn about stablecoins. So what are stablecoins? Well, they're crypto coins that try to peg their value to some other type of asset. This is for price stability reasons, and they aim to improve the usability of crypto because currently crypto is super volatile. The most popular one is USD Tether, but because it is controversial and the crypto market has been expanding, there's a need for other ones and more competitors have entered the fray. So why do we need stablecoins anyway? Well, ideally we don't because it's usually pegged to the USD, which is an inflationary fractional reserve banking created fiat currency, which belongs to the traditional finance system. Crypto is supposed to challenge that concept by being non-inflationary, trustless, and global, and does not rely on governments for its value. In the future, the grand vision is for crypto to take over fiat currencies and for price stability to be built in within crypto. In that scenario, there won't be a need for stablecoins that represent fiat value anymore. However, since crypto is still in its infancy, they're still extremely volatile, and that creates some problem for various participants. The use cases for stablecoins, therefore, are 1. To hedge against the volatility of crypto, 2. To transact with crypto but without price fluctuations during the transaction time. Three, to be able to convert crypto easily into USD value on the majority of crypto exchanges that don't support real fiat on ramps at this moment. Four, more altcoin trading available against fiat pegged trading pairs directly instead of having to make the extra hop from altcoin to Bitcoin to fiat value and back. And fifth, being able to transfer fiat value quickly between exchanges within hours instead of days. Because remember, if you want to make deposits or withdrawals to your USD bank account, that will take days. So what are the four major categories of stablecoins? Well, first you have your fiat collateralized stablecoins. This is tied to fiat currency like USD, usually in a one-to-one -one ratio, which means that the value of the token will be closely traded against the value of the fiat currency. Most of the time it's USD, but there are versions for other fiat currencies as well, although those have much less volume. Two is commodity collateralized stablecoins. These have other physical assets stored that back the coin, and therefore its value is pegged to that asset. One popular example is gold. Three is crypto collateralized stablecoins. These use crypto in one way or another to create collateral to back its value. This usually is more complex and aims to result in a peg to USD value on a one-to-one -one basis. Fourth is algorithmic supply stablecoins. These aren't collateralized at all, but instead they use a central banking algorithm that kind of increases or decreases the circulating supply based on changes in the demand for the coin, thus trying to stabilize the price. There are over 30 stablecoins out there in the crypto system currently, but we will discuss a few of the major ones per each category. First and foremost, the fiat collateralized stablecoins and USD Tether. This is by far the most adopted and longest existing stablecoin with the highest liquidity, but it is also the most controversial one. Why? Well, because it's supposed to be backed one to one with the USD that's stored in a bank account somewhere, but there is a lot of doubt on whether or not this is the case because the Tether company people say might be doing fractional reserve banking where they don't actually actually have everything backed one to one. This could endanger the value of USD Tether if it turns out to be true. The problem is that there have been no reliable or open audits that have been done to prove one way or the other. So basically using USDT requires a lot of trust in its company in an offshore account with unknown amount of USD. This goes against the trustless nature of crypto that we're trying to achieve. Also it should technically be possible to redeem real USD by turning in USDT to Tether company, but this is a process that most people can't perform. The other way for people to convert USDT to USD is on Kraken exchange, however the volume isn't that high and wouldn't be able to support a giant exit if a bank run would occur for USDT. USDT is also transacted with the Omni protocol, which is a protocol layer on the Bitcoin blockchain, which means that it has the same security properties as Bitcoin. This is really good because Bitcoin is super secure. However, the disadvantage is that there are really no good wallet options to privately store your USDT. There's only web wallets from Omni or Tether, 
or just exchange wallets, which are not very safe. There's also USDT as an ERC20 token, but this is hardly is supported by anywhere and has virtually no trading that goes on with it. But one benefit of this ERC20 version is that there are safer wallet options to store these coins privately. So if you think about USD Tether, there are some advantages. Super high liquidity and convenience supported by a lot of different exchanges, has a lot of trading pairs, and most people are familiar with a stable coin. Currently, the market cap of USDT is around $2.2 billion and trading volume of over $2.5 5 billion on a daily basis. However, you may have heard of the recent FUD surrounding Tether's banking woes and exchanges delisting the stablecoin. A lot of these were rumors, but they negatively affected Tether because people have tried to dump Tether in masses going into Bitcoin or going into other stablecoins, and so it's lost millions upon millions of market cap as users convert to those other coins, and it's effectively lost its peg to 1 USD, which is a bad indictment on how it's supposed to work. Because after that happened, it dropped down to 85 cents on certain exchanges and has slowly climbed up to a around 96 cents at present moment. The next one we want to talk about in the fiat collateralized stablecoin family is true USD or TUSD. This is a direct competitor to USDT, essentially the same concept, but they're trying to improve the trust issue by being a lot more transparent. It has existed since early 2018, has seen more adoption from various exchanges. It's an ERC20 token on the Ethereum blockchain and thus is convenient in terms of wallets and transactions. They do have a process for redeeming and purchasing that you can follow through with a trust token company. You do have to go through the KYC AML process and the minimum amount you can do is 10,000 bucks. The main difference in the system used between TUSD and USDT is that for TUSD, the USD that you pay is going to go through escrow and trust accounts. The TUSD tokens is then issued and sent to the purchaser's Ethereum wallet as sort of a payment receipt or IOU. And the incentive to go through the trust token platform for purchasing and redeeming TUSD for USD is that these you can always get a one-to-one -one ratio guaranteed, whereas if you do it on exchanges, you might not because the market might be slightly off. So therefore, this also provides an arbitrage opportunity which helps stabilize the prices on all exchanges. Another big benefit of TUSD is that there's an audit of funds held in their escrow every two weeks by official entity. This is 100% more transparent than Tether's approach. As we speak, TUSD has a circulating supply of roughly 160 million tokens and a daily trading volume that exceeds $15 million, so liquidity is slowly developing. So just to recap some of the most prominent benefits of TUSD compared to USDT is that the trust token company does not hold the USD reserves themselves, but in escrow accounts, which reduces the counterparty risk, which is one of the main concerns of Tether. TUSD supply and stored USD reserves are indeed audited and published frequently, also as opposed to Tether, which has not published an official audit for years, except for an unofficial screenshot by a law firm. Next up is the Paxos Standard Token, or PAX. This is one of the most recently launched stablecoins released by a company called Paxos Trust, which is the company behind the OTC exchange ITBIT. In September 2018, they were approved by the New York Department of Financial Services and therefore claims to be the first regulated stablecoin of them all. It's also one-to-one -one USD backed and can be purchased and redeemed directly from the Paxos website and also traded OTC on ItBit Exchange. Because they're regulated, they have to comply with several regulations such as the Bank Secrecy Act. They also have monthly audits of the third-party USD reserves. There are currently 10 trading pairs against Pax on three different exchanges and it has a total supply of 50 million tokens so far with a trading volume of roughly 18 million. A large amount of the Pax tokens is traded against USDT and not many other other altcoins are listed at this time. But this will hopefully improve as time goes on because they've only been existing for a short time so far. Next up is the Gemini Dollar or GUSD. This is an invention of the Winklevoss Brothers Gemini Exchange, which was approved roughly the same time as PAX by the New York Department of Financial Services. The USD reserves will be held in a US bank and fall under FDIC protections. They'll also perform monthly audits on the USD reserves and it's also backed one-to-one -one by USD and issued on the Ethereum blockchain as ERC20 token. One thing to consider is that it's also released so recently in September 2018, so there isn't much liquidity in supply yet. Only 1.2 million circulating supply and roughly $1 million trading volume. It's also interesting to note that there's no GUSD trading pairs on Gemini Exchange itself, according to CoinMarketCap.com, though people can convert it for USD on the Gemini platform and transact with it on the Ethereum blockchain. Most of the trading for GUSD pairs takes place on Buybox and HitBTC exchanges. Next up is USD coin or USDC by Circle. This is yet another one that came out in September 2018. And this is by Poloniex's parent company Circle. Just like the other ones, it's also an ERC20 token on the Ethereum blockchain. It has a New York bit license and is registered as a money transmitting service. There's also a purchase and redeeming process, just like the other ones we listed earlier. And there's no information yet on coinmarketcap.com, but trading pairs for USDC with BTC, ETH, and USDT are on Poloniex and it's 
Circle's intention to add more in the future and on more exchanges. One interesting difference though for USDC is that besides Circle, there's a process for other entities to issue USDC as well in the future. This introduces some form of decentralization and decreases the single point of failure risk that many stablecoins have to deal with if something happens with their parent company to no longer maintain the process. Next up is commodity collateralized stablecoins. One we want to talk about is Digix Goldcoin or DGX. This is an ERC20 token that's backed at a 1 token to 1 gram of gold ratio. This means that price stability is not pegged to USD but to gold, which is slightly more volatile. The gold is stored in a vault and has quarterly audits by an established auditor. Besides that, there is a smart contract process called proof of assets that is involved in the creating and redeeming of DGX tokens, which provides a decentralized way to audit the process on the blockchain. I'm not going to go into too detail about this creation process, but this involves something called additional asset card that kind of records information about the gold bar. And also that can feed into the DGX smart contract that then mints the corresponding amount of tokens. There's also a Digix DAO or DGD token, which gives the token holder governance rights and a decentralized organization which aims to build an ecosystem around the DGX token. People who hold that token can vote on proposals for that purpose. And so of course this ecosystem and the value of the token relies a lot on the existence and operation of the Digix company, just like all the other asset collateralized stablecoins. Another risk is that you're not really protected against a gold bear market if that ever happens. There's a low trading volume of around 70,000 on a daily basis, which is pretty low liquidity. And also 95% of trading for DGX takes place on Cryptono and Kyber network. Next up, is crypto collateralized stable coins. The first one is DAI by MakerDAO. The stable coin is DAI while the governance token is MakerDAO and they're both Ethereum based tokens that provide an extremely complex solution for price stability. But in contrast with the other fiat or asset backed stable coins, it's far more decentralized where there isn't a single point of risk involved. Furthermore, DAI is collateralized with crypto instead of fiat currencies, but its price stability mechanism is supposed to keep it at a one to one ratio with the US dollar. The system is pretty complex in terms of how it works and beyond the scope of this video, but I'll just try to summarize in terms of it uses a variety of mechanisms like debt positions, collateral to debt ratios, stability fees, and so forth in order to keep the price stable. This is indeed an interesting experiment with a crypto collateral stablecoin because it uses a decentralized solution of smart contracts and governance to maintain price stability without having to rely on USD centralized collateral. DAI has been on the market since January 2018, the early stages of the bear market, and has therefore at least proven to be actually stable against USD despite being collateralized with crypto, which has seen a 70% crash during the first few months of its existence, which is at least decent proof of its viability. So far, the market cap is around $60 million with a trading volume of 2.5 million, with most of its trading against BTC or ETH on HitBTC. It's also on 12 other exchanges and trades against 15 different crypto. Next up is Nomen or NUSD. This is another crypto collateralized stable coin and is a sister coin called Haven. Both are Ethereum based ERC20 tokens. They use a similar arbitrage system as DAI, but has its own different characteristics and functionality. Basically, they use a sort of arbitrage mechanism by locking up Haven tokens or by reverse burning NUSD by reclaiming Haven tokens to keep the price steady. One key difference between Nomen and DAI is that the collateral for DAI is ETH, but for NUSD, it's the actual Haven token itself. This has only been in operation since July 2018, so not much can be concluded about whether or not it can stay steady under extreme market conditions, but so far it has seemed to achieve its goal in maintaining price stability against USD in a decentralized manner. There's only $1 million worth of NUSD in circulation and the trading volume is around 120000 It can be traded on KuCoin with three trading pairs against USDT, BTC, and ETH. Next up is the Steam Dollar, which is part of Steemit, a blockchain platform for content creators. In that ecosystem, Steam tokens and SBD tokens are the two cryptocurrencies that are important for the peg of SBD against USD. Content creators are paid in both currencies, but SBD or the Steam dollar can be created or redeemed against the market value of Steam and USD at a one-to-one -one ratio. This means that one dollar in market price worth of Steam can be converted for one USD. Steam dollar has been actually around since summer of 2016, therefore has a super long track record compared to other stable coins. Current market cap is still around 15 million, however, and trading volume is only around 1 million, which means it's fairly illiquid. In the early stages, the price of SBD has been as low as 77 cents, but most of the time it's been fairly stable around $1. However, during the bull market of 2017, some crazy things happened, which include the price reaching briefly $22 in May 2017, after which it quickly crashed back down into its peg value. The second time during the later 2017, it went almost as high as $14 as its peak in December 2017, after which it steadily declined back to its original peg value range. Because of those instances, it has shown not to be resistant to price volatility under exceptional circumstances. However, if you think about 
about it, most of it has been to the upside, which means it's been worth more than a dollar. And so far, its low has only been at a 23% discount against USD at its infant stage. The last type of stablecoin we're going to talk about is the not collateralized ones controlled by algorithmic supply. One of them is Basecoin, and the price stability of this coin is supposed to be managed by the basis protocol, which is a central bank algorithm that increases or decreases the circulating supply of the coin based on supply and demand. Well, it's supposed to at least because this coin is only experimental so far, not yet operational. But it's worth noting because it has raised $125 million in an SEC filed token sale and marched in April 2018 with large investor backing, which seems to indicate that there's a lot of interest for this project. The the idea for this protocol is that it's entirely self-regulating the coin supply based on information fed by different oracles that make the protocol aware of the conditions of price, supply, and demand. What it's pegged to could be anything actually. It could be USD, but it can also be a variety of other assets or even a basket of assets. Basically on a high level, it uses base bonds or base shares in order to affect the price in a way that keeps the price stable. There's not too much other information or indication about this project yet on when they will come out, but it is an interesting one to follow because of its very experimental process for a stable coin. So what are our final thoughts about stable coins in general? Well, there's competition heating up against Tether, and this is good as we've seen in recent weeks to reduce the systemic risk that Tether provides to the crypto world. We've seen many different stable coins and different approaches and pros and cons to each one. Hopefully in the future, we won't need any, but for now, they should help the crypto market grow and mature by providing a certain usability function of crypto that the more volatile ones don't have. All right, so that's all folks. I hope you learned something new today. And as always, if you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comments below and we will definitely take a look and get back to you. As always, you can support us by smashing the like button and subscribing if you haven't already. We would love that immensely. This is Kevin. I hope you have an amazing rest of your day and I'll catch you guys on the next video.